From the director of Expendables 3, we get The Hitman's Bodyguard, starring Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson. That's bound to be a hit, right? Now, to be fair, the director, Patrick Hughes, who directed this movie and also directed The Expendables 3, did direct a different film, an earlier film, in 2010 called Red Hill. I have not seen this film, but he also wrote it. He didn't write any of the movies that he's directed that I've previously stated, but he did write and direct Red Hill, which I looked up the trailer for. Looks interesting, looks like I would like it, and curious, I checked Rotten Tomatoes and it's certified fresh. So it does seem like this director has a hit for his first feature length film. As far as Expendables 3 goes, I didn't like it all that much. I didn't think it was awful, but I didn't think it was good either. And as for The Hitman's Bodyguard, I thought it was way better than The Expendables, and I enjoyed it. But let's get into the plot first because Honestly, this is one of the few movies out there where I got trailers for it, but the trailers didn't give away the plot, didn't actually tell much of the plot, other than the fact that Ryan Reynolds is a bodyguard, and he has to be a bodyguard for a hitman, played by Samuel Jackson, hence the title, The Hitman's Bodyguard. At the beginning of this film, Ryan Reynolds is a triple-A bodyguard. No one has died on his watch, under his protection. But something horribly goes wrong at the beginning of this film, and suddenly he is no longer triple A material, and down on his luck. He gets a call from his ex, and it turns out his ex is working for Interpol and has a certain person they have to keep alive in order to get to a court in a different country. Because an evil dictator is being put on trial for war crimes, atrocities, and mass genocide. That war criminal, that dictator, being played by Gary Oldman. And it turns out the only witness that can prove that this man is evil and should be tried and punished is a hitman played by Samuel Jackson, who, as you can tell from the trailers, Ryan Reynolds and this hitman may not get along at first. 27 times. That's so many times this asshole's tried to kill me. 27, 28! Fucking prog. But Ryan Reynolds has to protect this hitman, has to get him to court, so he can testify against Gary Oldman. And along the way, comedy, adventure, action, all ensues. So, like I said, I actually enjoyed The Hitman's Bodyguard. It was a fun, simple movie. It wasn't as grand as it could have been, but it didn't have to be. It was just one of those enjoyable action comedies that was actually funny and actually had some good action within it. There are quite a few comedy action movies that either excel at the comedy or only excel at the action. But this one had a good, decent balance of both. There was a lot of moments that I really enjoyed, I laughed at, or at least silently laughed because I try to hold in my laughter as best as I can when I'm in the movie theater. Especially if there's more than a few people in the theater with me. And it was a pretty decent crowd. There was a lot of funny one-liners. I thought Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson were fun together. They had some great chemistry together. A lot of good antagonistic chemistry between the two of them because at the beginning of this film, like you'd expect, they don't get along, they don't like each other, they're really unnerved by each other, they're really annoyed with each other, and they're complete opposites. But they're also very different in how they go about their jobs where Samuel Jackson, the hitman, is more chaotic. He takes life one step at a time. He tries to overcome all the crazy randomness of life. While Ryan Reynolds tries to keep everything planned, tries to keep everything concise, and tries to not deviate from the plan. 
You've probably seen these kind of opposites before in other movies, probably even better movies, but Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson do well together in those roles. And they have some really funny back and forths with each other at times, especially when Samuel Jackson just tries to do his best to annoy the hell out of Ryan Reynolds' character. Now this is a rated R action comedy, so there are some brutal kills, there is some blood, there's some guts, there's some crazy deaths, and within that comedy, there is some really nice dark humor. Now granted, I've seen better dark humor in other dark comedies, but every now and then there's just a nice little touch of dark humor that made me laugh, especially with some of the kills, because there are some kills in this movie where it is both brutal, darkly comedic, and at the same time really badass. That's something that doesn't happen too often, even in other rated R action comedies. Because usually it's either just badass, or just brutal, or just comedic, and sometimes they don't meld well together, but in this movie there is a few kills in it that have all three of those elements. And there were definitely a few scenes in this movie, a few over-the-top characters that just made me laugh and just made me smile the entire scene. There are at least three scenes in this movie where I could not stop smiling. And all three of, well, two of those scenes are flashbacks. And all three of those scenes are in slow motion. They have a lot of darkly comedic moments within them. It is perfect for these flashbacks in the movie and they were the funniest damn scenes in the entire film, in my opinion. Especially the last scene, the, f the first flashback, and then the last scene in the movie just had me dying of laughter. Through concept, through the song, and the little moments where I'm looking in the background seeing someone brutally dying while this romantic song is being played and everything's in slow motion. And not only is the comedy handled well in this movie, the action is completely fine, and there is some pretty entertaining action in this film. From the gunfights, the fist fights, the explosions, the blood that spurts out of people, everything looked really good. Now, obviously, it's nothing like John Wick or Atomic Blonde or something as fantastic as those films, but... If you haven't seen a lot of action films, you don't see a lot of action films, then you might think that this is a pretty entertaining action film. Just don't go in with high hopes because it's above average, but really damn enjoyable. Hell, there's even three little moments towards the end of the film with Ryan Reynolds as he's being chased by four bad guys. Uh, they had to split up. Ryan Reynolds is running from four bad guys and each time he goes into a building, which is three times in this chase sequence, a fight ensues, and the fight in each of those buildings is one shot. It's handheld, it's one shot, and it's executed really nicely. Now, a more ambitious choreographer would have probably had all of this one shot, but it cuts away every time he goes out of a building, runs down the street and goes into another building because the one-shot long takes are only in the three buildings, not the times when he's going through between the buildings. And honestly, some people might find that lazy, but I thought that was a nice touch to the film. The story isn't groundbreaking. It is pretty simple. It is a bit of a road trip adventure story because they're trying to get to another country to take Samuel Jackson to the court. So it probably feels a little longer than expected and it could drag to some people. But I enjoyed it for what it's worth and even though that it was predictable and there were things in it that I kind of assumed would be in it before I even saw the film, I still didn't mind them. And there is still a simple character arc with a lot of the characters in this film. There are a few cliches that feel forced in there, like the third act breakup, which kind of feels fast and forced, especially when they get together right away in the next scene, practically. 
Now, even though this was a film that I did enjoy, there were definitely flaws and definitely things that did bug me in the film. For one, while the blood splatter is good, while a lot of the practical effects are good, and some of the CGI is good as well, there are a few fire effects and a few other things that do look a little cartoony. And there might have been a few green screen effects that also looked cartoony, but I'll get a little bit more into that when I talk about the camera work. While there is character development in this film, sometimes it feels fast, it feels forced, and sometimes it doesn't feel like it builds enough to really go about that change. And there are a few moments where it does feel like the movie gets a little long. As for the camera work, most of it is fine, but there is a few things that I did notice with this film. And it, some of it has to do with the lighting and the overexposure. Now, I have no idea if it was actually overexposed or if it was just bad green screen because sometimes it's really hard to tell. Like sometimes when it's overexposed and it's just really bright and it looks like maybe it's a cartoony green screen. Like it looks fake behind people in the background. There are definitely moments in this where it became noticeable and sometimes it's stylistic and sleek looking while other times it just looks cartoony, looks poor, and just looks really cheap. Like there's this one moment that I did like in the movie. There's this one moment after the third act breakup where Ryan Reynolds sits down and he's talking to a is it a kiosk? So yeah, someone at a kiosk or some sort of stand. And he's talking, he's complaining about Samuel Jackson, complaining about what happened to his job, what happened to him, and all the while this action sequence is happening because Samuel Jackson is all alone now trying to fight off these bad guys. And Ryan Reynolds, you see it in the trailer, Ryan Reynolds is like, oh, I hope they kill him, I don't really care, and this huge action sequence is happening behind him. I did like the scene, but it really irked me and it really bothered me that everything behind him just looked fakey as hell and looked green screen. But I couldn't tell because there's moments where this overexposure looks like green screen and I couldn't tell which was which and it really bugged me. And sometimes there was moments where things that probably shouldn't have been out of focus seemed out of focus. This only happened about one or two times. Like one of the incidents that really was most noticeable was this moment where Samuel Jackson had got shot in the leg and he's talking on the phone with his ex-wife or his wife actually anyway she's in prison he's talking on the phone with her and he's trying to take out this bullet now at this one moment it shows him on the toilet because he's in the bathroom this crummy looking bathroom that's supposed to be a safe house and the camera is far back enough where you can see his whole body so you can see his wounded leg, it's bleeding, it's practical effects, and I wanted to look at it, but as I looked down at the screen instead of him, which is, he covered most of the frame, when I looked at the leg, it looked blurry, it looked pixelated. Again, I don't know if it was haze, if it was out of focus, or something, something just looked off about it, and it really irked me. Yes, it's little things like that that did peeve me in this movie, but at the same time, I did enjoy it, and I did overall like the film. There's a lot of little moments I loved about it. There's a lot of things that made me laugh, even though some of it may not have been funny, and it's just my dark, twisted sense of humor that made me laugh. But overall, I had fun watching this movie. I liked it, and I'm going to give The Hitman's Bodyguard three and a half stars. So, did you see The Hitman's Bodyguard? What did you think about it? Go ahead and comment below. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and check out my movie reviews of 2015, 2016, or 2017. As always, this is Bruce Gifford and this was Just My Opinion.